Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope all is well with everyone. We're all about Parker Girls here in the studio. Mm -hmm. The last day to order your 10 issue subscription is June 19th, which is next Sunday. The first issue goes to the printer on the 20th, so that keep that in mind if you want to get a subscription. And the uh, first issue has a variant cover that the retailers are allowed to order, and that will also be included in the subscription. So if you want a subscription, do it by next Sunday. Clock's ticking, one week. San Diego Comic-Con is just around the corner and we'll be in our usual spot, Loop 2109 uh, on the main aisle. Be sure to come by and say hi if you're attending. We'd love to see you. Yeah. There's no other news from my desk. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Yep. Um, be sure to order the new sketchbook, hardcover, softcover. They're on the web store right now. Hardcover is uh, only available through us. Oh, uh, there you go. And don't forget the Serial Omnibus is also available. Ah, good. And um, since we, I'm doing these drawing videos, don't forget that I have a How to Draw book and it's available on the website. I kind of feel like the home shopping channel. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> if you better buy a thousand of these, you get a free washing machine. <laughs> I'd like to point out on the new uh, Parker Girls that uh, Richmond Comics did a wonderful bookmark promotion for the book. And I thought that was really cool that they did that. Um, so how nice is that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Richmond Comics. I'm uh, glad everybody's looking forward to it. I know. If you don't order a subscription, be sure you get your retailer to make sure he order he or she orders you number one. Yeah. So you can also get that signed variant. You're going to actually go to the printer and sign these before they're shipped to, to Diamond. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, And when I say you, I mean you, not me. <laughs> oh, that's a solo trip. That's yeah. okay. I'll go to San Antonio, I'll eat a taco, sign all your comics. It'll be good. So... Okay, well, if that's all you've got, let's get on the hot seat. Okay, let's, let's do it. Okay, the first question is from The Real Z. And they ask, the characters you create in your universe are so flushed out that just about any one of them could have a series of their own, with Serial being a fine example. So I would like to know how much of that is deliberately planned and how much of it is the character taking on a life of their own? I think the for the most part, the characters take on a life of their own. I. I I kind of think of a story and a plot and then uh, who's involved. So that's how the characters uh, develop. And then as I make the story, the characters tend to develop personalities. Maybe this one's uh, uh, cracking jokes all the time or this one's sarcastic all the time. And you kind of, then you start wondering why are they that way? Are they making jokes to cover something up? Next thing you know, you have you know, a little character profile in there. Um, so, it, and that just kind of uh, is either a good thing or a bad thing, whether it's a hero or a villain. So do you, if you'll answer the question, oh. counselor, <laughs> do you think that it's the character taking a life of its own more than you developing that character? The character's taking a life of its own. Um, Every single time? Uh, I know Zoe kind of made her own way and then the yeah. readers picked up on her and, you know, ran with it. But what about Francine? Yeah, I think even in the case of Francine, it just developed, it started as uh, uh, just a two dimensional character that I drew. And as you continue to work with that, it did takes you, on a life of its own. Did you need to flesh her out for your story, or did she flesh her flesh herself out? I, I honestly, I have to say, she sort of fleshed herself out as we went. I, I would get ideas about what I thought was going on, and then as I worked the idea, it's like working a second and third draft. You, you tend to change maybe everything. Um, and a lot of times I think I have a character, like even in Serial, I'm, I'm only into the first issue. This is Parker Girls. Parker Girls, sorry. <laughs> I'm into Parker Girls and I think I have a, whole, a character all figured out. And then I get eight or nine pages in and I think, you know, it'd be really cool if it was this way instead. And that's really kind of the character developing itself as you work with it. So um, I'm not locked in uh, before I ever start drawing. I. I figure it out as I draw and, and 
and revise and revise and revise as I work on it. Okay, well, hope I hope that, that answers the real Z's question. Yeah. Okay, second question is from Eric Fent. He says, to keep all of the G.I. Joe characters straight in his mind, Larry Hama, or Hama, I don't know, I don't either. assigns each character to a person he knows in real life. This helps him assign personalities, traits, etc. Do you use real people in real life to create the personality for your characters? Most importantly, if so, who is Robin in your work? Thanks for everything you put, you both do to provide us quality emotional stories. That's really a good idea. Um, and I, I'm sure that I do that once in a while with some characters. I'm drawing off of somebody or somewhere. Or, uh, I would like to say that for the most part it's all fiction, but I'm sure that there have been times where I'm thinking, you know, this I, character I has can, your personality. I can, I can name one in particular that we will not discuss. It will go, it will be in your autobiography. Okay. And that person confronted you and you lied and said, no, that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't lie. <laughs> Uh, sometimes people want to be in the book and they think they are and they're not. So that could be an insult to them. They think, why aren't I in your book? Uh, but you have, I think it's the safest thing to say is that nobody is in the book because otherwise you just get into trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a minefield right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're saying I'm not in the book? Only in all the loving scenes. Ah, got yeah. it. Okay. Okay, Eric, I hope that answers your question. Well, that's it for me. Do you guys, you guys have a good week and stay cool? What are you drawing today? Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a drawing from one of the early issues of Strangers of Paradise, um, and I'm going to redraw it in, in, in my style of the day. Just compare it, see how I did it then, how I would do it now, so. Okay. Yeah, draw me right here. So this is uh, issue two of volume two, Strangers in Paradise. It came out in, I think, 94. Um, yeah, 1994. Um, I had the beautiful color cover that I liked a lot and it had my very cartoony style. Uh, just a little line for a nose and just bare minimum stuff. Um, I was kind of influenced by having gone through a big manga period in 91, 92, 93. And then I started my own book. So I was kind of doing American manga or something. I don't know. Anyway, I had my own weird hybrid style. And sometimes I went for these expressions and sometimes I nailed it, sometimes I did not. This book has a drawing in it that has driven me crazy uh, all the whole time, all these years. I wish that I could redraw it. Okay, why am I covering this? Because this is the drawing I don't like. She bolts awake in bed, and her eyes are supposed to be shocked, and she's gasping, and all that. That's how I drew it. Oh, it's driving me crazy. I wish so much I could redraw it and put it into this issue. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Uh, I did a lot of things wrong on this particular drawing. And uh, if you wanna hang out with me for a few minutes, uh, we're going to look at that and redraw it, and I'm going to redraw it in my modern style and see if I could fix it. And forgive me if I don't draw it exactly the same, uh, everything, because some of the things that are wrong are the actual positioning and the alignments and all that, so I may actually uh, change some of that. Um, if I'm drawing it today, here's how I start roughing it in. And this is probably how I roughed it in the first time. I just kind of did a, a rough, my rough cart cartoon face. Um, I'm indicating that hair goes back. And uh, one thing I've learned about Kachu over the years is um, her hair is very thick on top. Where you show real thickness of hair is on top. Uh, somebody has been blessed with, you know, a carpet of thick hair up top and then it just kind of flows and tangles like bedhead after that. So, you know, whatever, Maybe off to the moon. Um, okay, we're going forward 
like that. So now I'm thinking everything is, has speed lines on it, right? And now I simply divide the neck up into thirds. There's that middle part, there's the tendon part here, and there's a tendon part on the other side. And then I think about uh, the skull going back here and that neckline going there. This skull goes to the bottom of the ear. I mean, that jawline right there. And that jaw is flexing open. So I'm thinking about stuff like that now. And then we'll get into expressions last, but just at least get it in the right place. Um, there's that main tendon, and then there's another flexing tendon there. Um, but it doesn't matter right now. We're not into that. Now let's let's even get rid of it. Don't even think about it. Just think about your your basic pose. Just draw like an animator. Just make your uh, the beam body first. And I've already put the slant of the shoulders in here. There's gonna be a shoulder here. There's a shoulder there. That arm went back behind the body. You don't see it, you, but the, we as human beings know it's there. Even if you can't draw it, you know it's there. You know it if you see it right or if you see it wrong. Um, If you can't draw and you see a bad drawing, you still know it's not right. The same way like if you came up on a person and they're laying on the ground and their arm is in the wrong place, you know it when you see it, right? You think, you know, oh, okay, that one's had an accident. I need to help them. Uh, you know it when you see it. Okay. Now I'm doing something I should have done over here. I thought I'll just cover it with sheets. I got about this far and just thought, let's flow some sheets. It doesn't work that way because look what I did with my legs. I got them all wrong. Okay, so think about it. Here's the body in bed. There's the front of the stomach crotch. Right there is where, here's your butt. Here's the top of your thigh. Here's the top of the other thigh. You want that thigh to come up and this thigh to come up and they're both going forward in the same in the same slight V. Uh, you do a V so that you can sit up. All right. Like that. So you line down and then you bolt up and your feet go up to help you do that. Otherwise, you bolt up and your legs are flat. Well, what are you, a ballerina? You have that kind of great flexibility? No, when you bolt up, your, your your legs would bolt up to help you in case you're going to launch or something. So, I don't know, it just seemed like the natural thing to do. Smaller torso on Kachu, uh, slim waist, and then kind of just talking to myself here, aren't I? And I was pulling these um, lower legs back too far in. You're not trying to sit up on your legs, you're just trying to get going. Okay, so it's gonna be something like that. And actually, this leg could come out more this way. And somebody was asking me, why don't you um, use blue pencil? because look how much blue would be on the paper. That's why I don't. Um, I think blue pencil is when you're drawing the same thing uh, over and over like a character and you, um, you're you really familiar with drawing that character and you, you're you gonna nail it anyway. You just kind of figure out where, it, where the target of the character is on the paper and then you're gonna use your muscle memory to draw the character. Uh, perfect every time like if you were drawing if you were a Mickey Mouse animator and you've drawn Mickey Mouse 1,345,000 billion times um, all you need is a light slight indication to get it started of where to go okay 
So that's how I'm going to do the body. So erase all that crap and then get in here. Let's do the face. One thing I'm doing right away is not going for the Jackie Gleason, uh, the full whites of their eyes thing. It's kind of a comedy trope. And I, I've seen people make this big of an eye. I've never seen anybody really do that unless they were a comedian. Um, so... Um, one risk, <clears throat> one of the risks that I, I run in doing uh, something like this is getting the eyes too close together and those eyes are too close together. So, uh, one of the reasons for that is I have a weak eye and so one side tends to not get the, the priority that it should in terms of alignment and, okay, trying to think here. Okay, now that I'm drawing the face, it's coming out smaller than um, my layout. And I'm gonna go with it. Okay, here's, my center has changed. My center is now, my center is right there. The nose comes way out, center is right there. So the center of my mouth is there. And it doesn't curl up like that, that was a bad idea. I'm going to be changing this mouth. It's really hard to judge. Uh, once you get the mouth really open, it really changes the jaw and everything, and it can really change how the person looks. Maybe this is why I was having trouble with it in the first place. Sometimes you'll notice the teeth are on the bottom, but not on the top, because when you're sometimes when you're crying out, your teeth come down, your lip comes down. You're pulling that lip with the jaw, so the jaw pulls like that, and it covered the teeth. And maybe that's what I was trying to do when I got that tooth like that. So let's just put the bottom of our teeth in there for now. And then make that slant for the tongue. Like that. And then realize that that bottom lip comes out. And now I have drawn her face as long as I've ever drawn it in my life. But that's what happens when you yell out. You extend that jaw like that. So you have to kind of like yeah, no, I'm going to distort my face, the one that I'm used to drawing over and over. Too much cheek on that side. Let's give her more of a head start on the top. And... That's a better eye than now these eyes are starting to look really afraid. Getting better. This mouth is actually too low. When I get everything positioned, I can start seeing what's what's in the right spot and what's not. So lightly indicating the mouth now. I like all that. That's okay. How is the bottom lip? 
if I try to stay close to my original, I would do like that because it shows a little more disgust or horror, uh, which means we would see the bottom teeth in there and then the tongue in there, right? And maybe not see the top teeth because the, we're pulling the, the top lip down. Okay. Where I could probably find a reference for this is like a hammer film, a horror film, you know, from the 60s. Okay, what if we don't put top teeth on? You get that, and you add the bottom teeth. I didn't have any bottom teeth. It looks like she has no teeth. She, she leaves her teeth in a jar of water by the bed. Okay, so now we have bottom teeth. Okay. Better. Better nose. And oh my God, she has teeth now. Thank God. And I really didn't change too much about this uh, outer jawline here, did I? Or the three-quarter view. And that's all still there. Um, okay. And I did do something here where I pulled her jaw down all the way. Uh, usually you have this really cute little uh, diamond face. Not if they're screaming. Um, I could actually make this more exaggerated, but I don't think I will. I don't want to go for the super uh, distorted uh, screaming at the top of your lungs. More of a gasp, you know, just like a big gasp. Um, okay, real quick on the hair. Um, her, where is the hairline? The hairline roughly is pretty low, average low, but not too far back. And then it comes up here to a peak uh, right in there. And then it comes back to there. That's her hairline. So when I'm drawing the hair, I start doing the, the line there. So it's into the temple. And then uncut um, hair here. That's, that's not trimmed or anything. So it's easy for that to be little flyaways. And then erase the back, um, that super thick top, and that right there indicates how thick the top is. How far did I go up before I came down? Uh, and that's your natural Elvis thing happening there. And then right on the top of the head right here, it kind of puffs again, and then it wants to fall, but it depends on how long your hair is as to how it um, flows. So let's just roughly say it was something like that, okay? And then when you get into the details of the hair, then you get into whether, was it brushed or is it bedhead? And it's a mop. I would go with bedhead um, and make it as sloppy as possible. Okay, um, follow the chin back to about there and that's where your neck is. I always add a little thing right there so it's easy to see. And then there's where Abdullah Abangada, that little dip in the neck, this one, little whoop, whoop. center, 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 center. Where's your center? These bones come up pretty quick. Outside, chest. Like that. And this back is arced. And immediately when I did that back arc, it started looking like she was going forward uh, to me. Okay, top of the shoulder, right there. Side of the shoulder, like that. Arm. Connect it to the body, like that. Center, chest. Like that. Okay, 
Rib cage is here and the soft middle is here. <laughs> That's a belly button. <laughs> it looks like a bow tie, but it's meant to be a belly button. The back is bent there, but then there is, I could go like this, uh, but I don't want to go all the way, so I'm going to go compromise between here and here. And one of the ways to get these speed lines to happen without being super corny um, is to do it with your hair, of course. So we have to figure that out. And that gets into a designer thing. Uh, and that's really where you kind of get a lot of, a chance to do your, make a style where you do your hair a particular way and it's gorgeous, you know? Don't blow it off because your hair is your cape. Um, take time to get it right. Okay. Here's why we're gonna need the sheet because center line here, center line there, other cheek, butt cheek, other cheek. And now There, perspective, perspective, helps you find out where that other knee is. And then that, my God, that gorgeous line right there that human beings have. Okay, this foot kind of goes out, this foot kind of goes out over here like that. We don't need to know because it's in the sheet. So the sheet comes in here Sheet comes in here, and then it's pulled like that. And then, um, if I was doing this today, instead of having straps safe and sound, um, you can have a strap there, and then one here, and then, since we mentioned horror, the Hammer Horror films, there was always one strap off. <laughs> and maybe we should pay attention to that because the horror hammer films are a lot more popular than my books. So learn a lesson from that and one strap off. All right, so there's the gown and here are the sheets. Now that I know where the legs are on the sheet, Like that? Okay, watch. I drew the legs so that it would look right when they're not there. Like here, pillows back here. And I would kind of, when I got serious about the hair and tried to do it pretty, it would probably be like this. Maybe try one in front because she has more hair than the law allows, as they used to say. Something like that. Okay, that's how I would draw this today. Um, that's how I would draw it today. And I wish, I understand that my beginnings were cartoony, but when you look at, even by cartoony standards, I missed the mark. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but I hope that's not Kachu. So, um, from there to there, uh, and all it took me was like an entire career um, to uh, to get there. That chin doesn't need to be that strong. Even better. All 
All right, guys, that's uh, that's how you wake up from a nightmare in Strangers in Paradise. So I hope this has helped. Uh, it helps me to go back and look at it, and at least I feel a little more resolved that, okay, I, lay, I, I, I drew this uh, drawing that's a D plus <laughs> or D minus, but uh, at least um, now I've, I've, my journey has taken me to a place where I can see what I did. And that's all you can hope for in life and including your art. You hope that uh, you can learn how to see these things and get better and better to get to a point that you're a little happier. I'm sure that in another 140 years, I would look at this drawing and rip it apart and think, look, here's how I do it now in, in 9D hologramic uh, realism. Uh, but uh, I'm happy with that journey. So keep drawing. The more you draw, um, the better you'll get. You do best what you do most. Um, try to look and see it matters what's going on inside all these places here. So draw the whole butter bean and limbs and all that stuff like an animator and then put your stuff on top of it. Don't think that your clever inking tricks are going to get you out of this. They won't. <laughs> We see. We see it. You're not fooling us. All right, guys. See you next week.